I'm Mr. Biffo, and I welcome you to Digitizer, probably the only show about retro video gaming on the entire internet. Mock, mock! Oh. 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 oh, that was weird. What? This is exciting, isn't it, everybody? Yes. Uh, the first episode, a new dawn of retro gaming goodness. Gar okay, goodness. Goodness. It's a like garbage. Uh, <laughs> the door is um, still out on that one. So why are we here? Why is retro gaming a thing, Larry Bundy Jr.? I think modern gaming is more of a sort of a cookie cutter, sort of cut and pacing. So everything was sort of more variety back then. Do you think people, though, are willing to overlook uh, flaws in the old games just because the nostalgia papers over it? I think there's more good games out there to cover up the bad ones. Would you agree with that, Octavius Kitten? One of my uh, biggest interests is indeed the bad games because they're hilarious. Have you played the game Mad Nurse? Yeah. <laughs> yeah where the aim is to stop babies falling down a lift shaft. <laughs> what? Seriously, yeah. it's and one of the best games on the, spe it's on the spectrum. Yeah. It was, I think it was on the C64 as well, I'm not entirely sure. It might have been. There's like, like three or four floors, isn't there? And yeah. there's babies in cribs and crawling around stuff, and you just need to stop them from trying to kill themselves. <laughs> You can, and you can All gas the them. For the you can gas the babies to temporarily yeah. stop them. Yeah, you can. Gameplay, Jenny. What was your format of choice growing up? I think I'm probably a little bit different from everybody else because I had an Acorn Electron. I liked all the things that you could type in yourself. Ten print bum, twenty go to ten. Absolutely. That was, that was the extent of my programming. <laughs> uh, Paul Gamnon. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm all right. How are you, darling? Yeah, I'm all right. I like the jacket. Thank you. And by like, hate. Not a fan of it. It looks like you've spilt a negative Vianessa down your front. There <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> we are. So you, you're a Nintendo boy, aren't you? I am, actually. I remember well, we had an Amstrad CPC 464 at home somehow, because my family were quite poor, so I don't know how they got all this stuff. Stole it, probably. Um, yeah, I begin to think maybe they did. <laughs> but then the, my mate had a Game Boy, and I coveted a Game Boy for absolutely years because Quavers were doing a giveaway at the time, so if you open the little packet up, you tear it, and it'd be, you've won a Game Boy, or you haven't won. And so for the summer of like 1990, I think I ate 400 bags of Quavers <laughs> just to try and win a Game Boy. And not only did I not win one, but my hands smelt of cheesy arseholes, so it was oh, really awful. And nothing's um, changed. And no. So he sh let me play with his Game Boy and it had Link's Awakening in. And to this day, I would still maybe put Link's Awakening in the top three games of all time ever that I've played. I think we should probably get on and play a game of our own. Let's do it. But first, who would like to see a beautiful boy? <laughs> You're watching Digitizer the Show. Stay away from our bins. Is your swan too moist? Hello, this is the part of the show that we have imaginatively titled Head to Head. And what I do is I split the team into two teams and I get them to go into a battle of thought, of mind and of influence to try and win me over to their side of the argument over the topic of choice. And today's topic of choice is, you see it, Nintendo, the Super Nintendo and Sega's Mega Drive or Genesis if you're from that there America. It's very simple on Team A today. Um, I'm going to let you name yourself. Do you have a funny witty name or just A? Team Stardust. Oh. Ziggy nice. or the Neil Gaiman book version? No, the dust. Oh, the actual real the thing, cos the Stardust. cosmic dust from Absolutely. space. I like it. So, Team Stardust, you will be talking about the Super Nintendo today. You'll be defending its honour, okay? Easy. Team B, give us a witty name. What would you like to be called? Ninja Pasta. He's happy with that. I am very happy with that. If you're both very happy, then Team Ninja Pasta will be up against Team Stardust. So, we're going to start with you guys. Mm. You have the Super Nintendo, you're defending it for your honour. First of all, tell me a bit about its specs. What do you know about it? What is its major USP? Well, more colours. Mode 7 3D effects oh, and yeah. scaling. But what was Mode 7 really, though? The yeah. Mega Drive couldn't, couldn't hope to scale sprites. 
Counterpoint. Oh. So, Team Ninja Pasta, is it true? What was so good about Mode 7? Didn't that have speed blast processing? It did. It was what fast, was that then? Faster processor on the Mega Drive than this with Nintendo. I don't know. Yeah. That. And also with the Mega CD could do scaling. In could rotation, row seven. Yeah, oh, we're what? not going to talk about the Mega Sonic. CD in this what is instance. An add-on. We're going to we're going to just imagine it's <laughs> 1994, and all the kids have gone crazy for these. So I just want to talk about this. Work on you, and I'll say, oh yes, but the Mega CD came out in December 1994. No, no, I was probably looking forward to the PlayStation 1994, but <laughs> I don't know when machines came out. Appalling. Okay, so. <laughs> Mega Drive, what's it, what, what is its USP? For a start, it was marketed more towards adults rather than children. Ooh. So, it's already a much more mature and sophisticated console. Oh, I like that. Is it? Is Nintendo for kids? It's for the child in all of us. Oh, well said, sir. So. That gets you my delightful horn. Desk. Whoa, I got delighted, so I touched the, my delight horn. <laughs> <laughs> that means I'm happy with an argument, <laughs> all right? Tell me about the games then. So, Jenny. Well, my overriding memory yeah. of the Super Nintendo, of which I never had one, I'd like to point oh, of out, course, yeah. is walking into WH Smith's and seeing it all set up in its glass demo case and all the rest of it, and F-Zero playing on that monitor and being blown away by the speed, and mm. Biffo's already talked about the Mode 7 yeah. graphics and all of that, and that sticks with me. And mm. I think for something I didn't own to stick with me that much, Says it all, really. I like that. Mm. Scott, what do you think? What games would you recommend? All the Nintendo first party games. Yeah. You've got your Mario, okay. Zelda, Pilot Wings, right. Super Tennis. Okay, all right, and then in that case, Mega Drive, what was in its bounty? One with a blue hedgehog, if I recall. No, I don't know. I don't remember that one. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. that one. No. Uh, Sandy Mickey, the Hedgehog. Mickey Mouse. Blue Mickey Mouse. There was actually a Mickey Mouse game. Yeah. There. Michael Jackson, the game. Michael! We had blood in games. That's all right, you didn't have that, did you? Didn't they, need it. They, they did. They just, they just, yeah, we didn't have all the blood and gore, did we? We had the definitive version of Street Fighter 2, <laughs> thank you very much. We had the at definitive the version of Super Street Fighter 2. Oh, he's, oh, oh. he's not rung his bell. Oh, You're okay. interrupting. <laughs> no, I don't mind that. That was a good counterpoint. Sorry, Dad. I like, no, I like counterpointivity. Well, that means. All right, okay, so we're going to do a little thing of one-upmanship. You're going to give me a fact about the Mega Drive, yes. and I want you to one-up fact. Give me a fact about the Mega Drive. Hey, it was the first ever console to have online capabilities. Right, what can Nintendo do to one-up that? It didn't need a Mega CD, it didn't need a 32X, any of that rubbish, it was good enough. That's true, it was, it, that was full of tat. What would you say to one-up that? I know I looked at you, but it was, <laughs> too much. it was just the nice eye contact moment. <laughs> Oh, I'll have I'm to come. The we'll have to yeah, it's all right, isn't it? Good, we'll yeah. have to confer. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they have notes. They <laughs> have notes. <laughs> Look, notes. Cheating. I know. Raise your hand. Show them we have no notes. No notes. You can film my lap. It That's had more blue RAM blue and high screen resolution, so it was a like high def system. Yeah, yeah, it had, yes. it had high, def high definition on the That's front of it, didn't it? So, yeah, and, and yeah, writing it on there, I, I could have written on the PlayStation, this will travel through time. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't mean that it will. Well, there it is. There it is, 20 years later. <laughs> Just look at them, Jenny. I'm not talking about Octavius and Larry. I'm talking about the aesthetics of the machine. That's true. It's horrible. The Mega Drive is it's quite horrible. an ugly thing. SNES always end up this really horrible, gross yellow colour. It yeah. looks like it's been in a, mm. a heavy smoker's house for the last 20 years. Okay, Possibly eventually not. it ended up like that. We'd all look a bit it? yellow and desiccated <laughs> after... And sticky. And sticky. <laughs> I mean, I'm like now. <laughs> but that never had the opportunity oh. to yeah. go yellow because it's just a black brick and it had to have other black bricks That's true. put on top of it. It looks like a Ferrari because it was styled after a Ferrari. Oh, yeah. whatever. What's this? What car is this? This is yeah. a friggin' a Panda or something. <laughs> that's a Renault 5. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's what that is. Well, well, speaking of someone who owns a slightly useless car, yeah. some of us are secure enough in ourselves that we do not need a car that is an extension of our genitals. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's good to know. All right, well, in that case, give me a heartful, emotional reason why your console should work. We will start with Jenny. I'm going to give you one reason. Go on. Why this should win. Go on. It's a very strong argument, I will say that. Sound effects are not a good argument. Well, it's, it's an iconic sound effect, she's saying. What iconic sound effect did the Mega Drive give us? Right, for a start, um, all of the Sonic sounds. That terrifying noise you get when you're drowning. 
That that is <laughs> awful. <laughs> yes. yeah. That actually happens <laughs> in real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it does. <laughs> yeah. In fact, the film Titanic will be improved considerably <laughs> by having Jack do that sound. Um, um, mm, mm. They hate you. It, they made strong points, Barry. They want you to fail, Barry. Look at him with his lobster. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've decided. We, he has given me some film. Um, I'm going to go with the Nintendo. I'm sorry, it's Nintendo yes. for me. Yes. Yes. Take a drive to pretend to the crown. And that is my final word on the subject. Thank you for head to heading me. Microwaves are perfect for warming up small dishes, such as stuffed vine leaves. <laughs> Did you know? The Legend of Zelda's opening scroll was originally meant to be played to Maurice Ravel's Bolero, as everything is legally regarded as public domain in Japan after 50 years. However, after discovering that the game was actually only 49 years and 11 months old just before Zelda's release, composer Koji Kondo did an all-nighter to quickly replace Bolero with the now famous Legend of Zelda theme. Why Nintendo didn't simply delay the game for a month? No one knows. Give up my Atari? My television? How about for this? You bet your asteroids. It's time for show and tell, the part of Teacher Ties of the Show, where one of my co-hosts brings a thing, shows me it, and tells me about it. Let's find out who it is this week. Why it's Larry Bundy Jr. And what is this thing? It's a Vectrex made by NB Games and uh, General Electric. Oh, no, GCE in America, sorry. It looks like a sort of uh, space age television. It is. Yeah. Let me just cast your mind back to 1982, right? Okay, you've only got one television in the house. What do you do? Do you either wait for your parents to finish watching Match of the Day, or do you go out and buy one of these if you're spectacularly rich? Are you, is, this a, is this a rhetorical question, or are you genuinely asking well, me? It's somewhere in between rhetorical and... I mean, you could actually go about and buy another television for this price because yeah. it was a good two, three hundred pounds at the time. Wow, which is five, That's, six hundred pounds. You buy a rhinoceros with that in you could today's do. money. Oh. An ocelot. <laughs> My ocelot. An ocelot, yes. And anyhow. <laughs> anyhow, yeah, this is the uh, Vectrix. It's not actually pixelated. So it, it uses the vector graphics. Vector that graphics, right? that's the word, yes. I'm sort of pretending I don't know what this is, but I, I lusted after the Vectrex when is, I was a youth. Well, it looks like a little arcade machine for your house. Well, I, I had a particular thing for vector graphics. Uh, Star Wars. Star Wars yeah. and Asteroids. Shall we turn it on, actually? Well, yes! How yes. do we do it? Do it? Oh, Where's the button? Uh, I can't see any. There's a fun button. I think it's over here. There's a knob. I, I do believe you've got to lift the knob up and let it drop yeah. down. <laughs> so what? It's not doing it when you're blind. Do, would you like me to do it? You look, like nice, you're, yeah. you look like you're making yeah, sweet love to it. Uh, so yeah, you lift the, you lift lift the flap. Lift the flap. And look at that. Nice it's, all, it's all tucked away. That is... I, I'm going to say it, it's a beautiful bit of design. It's, nice. it's also an analog joystick, that is. That's one of the first ever wow. analog sticks. Anyway, there should be a, a knob on here, the volume knob, okay. that lets you turn yeah. it on. I might just let you do it, because I like oh, the you. I No, I'm not going to. I was just, just, just enjoying you hugging, <laughs> hugging the Vectrex. <laughs> like, I've, I've turned a thing. Oh, I can hear a sort of buzzing yeah, noise. Buzzing. Oh, Christ. Mindstorm. Mindstorm. So, game built in, then? We haven't it is. A free game built in. Tell me about the the flappy bit of screeny thing on there. Oh, that, that is an, that. called an overlay. Okay. You can see the original graphics are just black and white. Yeah, it gives you a, <laughs> gives you a little bit of colour on the screen having okay. an overlay. Would you like me to put it back now? Yes, please. Because right. I think that's a bit migraine inducing leaving it off off the time. Mm. And yeah, yeah, this is uh, Mindstorm. It yep. is uh, definitely not copying oh, it's doing asteroids. Things. That's quite, it's an impressive sort of 3D nice. ship thing at the yeah, beginning. Yeah, it's very sort of smooth graphics as well, in. back to the time. Nice. It's got a funny little story, this game. Mm. Uh, it's got a bug in the game where it crashes after the 13th level. Ah, oh, unlucky uh, for some. It is, actually. Well, the funny story is uh, they didn't discover this while making the machine because nobody could get that far in a game. The appeal for the Vectrex for me is it looks like a thing from the future. Yeah. Even now, I just think it's beautiful. I don't think I ever saw one in person. I think, uh, I might be wrong, they may have been exclusive to Boot. Oh my god, of all places. Yes. <laughs> so I see here. Yes. There is a, that's one of the cartridges, but that's not an original, is it? It is not, no. That is uh, somebody's gone out in the future and made a flash cart. I believe yes. uh, that 
the games, they a few years ago, they all ended up in the public domain. They did. So they're, they're freely available. That's not illegal. It's because the uh, MB who had the, bought the rights of GCE, mm. they were so embarrassed by the poor sales that when they went uh, to make themselves look good to be bought by Hasbro, mm. they actually gave away the rights. <laughs> I think MB stands for massive bellends, <laughs> if you ask me. Because uh, they had a load of these unsold mm. stock. Uh, and they turned them into Alusha colour testing machines in Shop. Alusha? Basically, it's uh, a colour test that lets you choose what your eyeball is, your preferable colour to your eyeball. How does it, what, I don't understand, I don't well, it doesn't, understand well, that. This is not gaming well, content, see, yeah, I appreciate that, but get content. used to it. <laughs> it's a psychological test that uh, lets you determine what your favourite, what your brain's favourite colours are. I, my mind determines what my favourite colour yeah. is. What's yours? Uh, so yellow. Mine's purple, if anyone's wondering. Mm. Kind of lilac-y shade. Just before they sold, mm. uh, well, they gave away the rights for it, they were going to planning a handheld version of this. Fortunately, they heard in the news that Nintendo were working on some handheld system. Oh. Don't know what happened to that. And uh, they got intimidated. They got so intimidated by Nintendo's success, they went, no, we'd have got no chance. But this is more or less handheld, isn't it? I mean, you just well, with both hands. It's not much bigger than an Apple Watch. Uh, there was some extra items released for this as well. Okay. Uh, there was a light pen, so you could draw lines. Mm. Mm. There was a 3D glasses, oh. which allowed you to see it in colour. <laughs> Basically, there's a red, blue and green disc that spun around and around really quickly and for some, and somehow they managed to get it work that it could tell the difference in colours on the lines. How bizarre. And there was uh, plans to bring out a keyboard for it to turn it into a full computer. Good Lord. And run basic on it. Thank you, Larry. Uh, that's the end of Show and Tell for this week. Bye. Bye bye. 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 No wonder Vectrex was chosen two to one over Atari and in television for real arcade games. A good filling for stuffed vine leaves is spaghetti. I can just crab and you up, man. We're playing video game pioneer or murderer. Sorry, pioneer. Pioneer, that's correct. Can you correct, read that back correctly from the screen then, please? V video game pioneer. No, that says video game pin on ear. Video game pin on Pi ear. Pioneers, video no, no, game no. pioneer, Paul. Pin on ear. Are you, are you mocking uh, the um, spelling? I am mocking not only the spelling, but your attitude. You, you deal, wrong, deal with you the spelling wrongly, mistake. I think. Admit to the spelling mistake and I'll sit down. I, I'll stand here forever. Please just oh. admit to the mistake. Right, moving on. So, the game, the game of this aim is to see if you can guess which of the people that appear behind me are murderers and which of them are video game pioneers. Yeah, so we're gonna have team there yeah. Yeah. and team meh. See, I'll come, I'll come up with proper names. Yeah, brilliant. No, yeah thank you, look, Octavia said that was brilliant. Octavia, did you? Yeah. yeah. Did you? Brilliant. Yeah. All right, we're over. Can I also just say as well that I'm really pleased that I feel like we're gonna come away from this as mm. much safer people. I also wanna know what a pin on ear is, so I'll, I'll learn that hopefully over the course of the next few questions. <laughs> it's getting embarrassing for you now, Paul. Is it? Yeah. Now I'm really confused that you're right and now I'm wrong. Video game pioneer or murder? <laughs> so, here's our first video game pioneer. <laughs> it's Willy Higginbotham. He can't spell either. Well, <laughs> yeah. don't let's not. The, the aim of this game is not to criticize the spelling. I'm spitting everywhere now. I spat on oh. you, Jenny, and that is what you deserve. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Who is that? Right, it's, it's your turn, team. Uh, Willie. Is he a murderer or is he a video game pioneer? What do we think? I don't know. What do I, I think? I, did he, did he, did he, can I ask a question? Dissolve his victims in acid or did he invent uh, some sort of. Can game I ask on an oscilloscope or something. So, what do we think? Murderer or pioneer? He it's looks entirely capable of dissolving somebody in acid. It looks like he knows how to dispose of a corpse, yeah, so I'll does. give you that. He looks, however, also dashing. And I don't think there's ever been a dashing murderer. I'm calling this, that's a murderer. Murderer? Is that your final I'm gonna answer? go with Jenny. The answer is... Not oh! a murderer! Well, I knew that. Where's my bell? It's on the other side. So what, what did they, he do? Nah. What did he do? What did he do? Yeah, he did, oh, I don't know. Pole, pole. <laughs> is this, is this some like researcher that? comes into this show? <laughs> he was a pin on ear. 
So, uh, our next video game pioneer or murderer is... Oh, Jared Lee Lofner. Oh, that's a, no, that's oh, definitely a killer. Look, he's, got a, he's got a name badge. Right now, is it down? He's got a very murdery name. I don't know, he looks like a guy who played, made PC games in the 90s. He's probably the guy who created Spyro the Dragon or something, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's, he's got a murdery name and he's got a bit of a stabby haircut. <laughs> stabby haircut? <laughs> Come on, mate. You know very, what I mean, right? It's stabby yeah, haircut. Like he's he's cut it himself. Yeah, he's got a very curb stomping haircut. Yeah, he's got other things to do, you know. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't want to be mucking Stop around cutting hair. Maybe. Exactly. Murdering, yes. Or making games. I, I think this lad went around being a bit murdery. Okay. To be honest, what do you reckon, Larry? I, I think he made games because he looks like a... Oh, well, that, okay. well, we need <laughs> to... I don't know. What is a murderer who made games? He's like... He's, I think he's more murdery than gamey. He's murdery. He's a murderer. Jared Lee Lofner is... <laughs> murderer! He's got a murderer's name. Moida! It was Moida. What gave it away was the Lee in the middle. Yeah. Lots of murderers have a the yeah. Lee in the middle. Yeah. Like... Jamie Lee Curtis. Another example I can't think Jamie of. Jamie Lee Curtis was the one I was yeah. trying to think of, but my brain just kept going, Billy Ray Cyrus. <laughs> There was a murderer with a Lee in the middle, and Lovely. it's going to bug me. Was his name Murder Lee Dude? Tommy Lee <laughs> Stabbington. <laughs> Tommy Lee Stabbington if, from uh, Murderville. Right. right. Moida. 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 Uh, Ted Dabney. Murderer, not murderer. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, why are we laughing at Ted Dabney? Why do you look so murder face all over him? <laughs> that looks like he was actually taken on death row. Yeah. Or yeah well. The moustache, that's excellent. They miss, missed a bloody ice pick. It looks like a piece of fuzzy Okay, felt. team Mir. Not sorry, your go. sorry. Colin Ice Pick is real. Is name. there I... any scenario in which that's not a murderer? No, because he's got the word Ted. Lots of great murderers have the word Ted. Oh, murderer. Yeah. We're saying murderer. Ted right. Dabney is. Oh! oh. oh. Team Ne. Oh. Oh. Willie Crowther. Crowther. Is he a murderer or is he a video game pioneer? I don't know. He looks like someone who worked for Apple. Did, did, the you, did you take this photo yourself with a long lens or something? <laughs> it looks like you've been following him around and that's just the like best that? you could get. He's got mm. the Harold Shipman going on. I, Shipman, more like. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. 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 Get up. <laughs> Crowther. He does kind Crowther. of have that long-suffering, mm. defeatist sort of look that you yeah. usually get with game developers. Yeah. So... It looks like he could be stabby if someone just pushed him over yeah. the edge. Oh, oh. So we're saying not a murderer, but could be. Yeah. yeah. As in, if pushed. If pushed, yes. right. <laughs> Let's find out. Is Willie Crowther, Crowther, is he a murderer or is he a video game pioneer? <laughs> he's not a murderer! Yeah. Oh. Okay, Ricky Casso. I actually know he's a murderer. I actually know you he's a murderer. You know that. I listened to a podcast last week about him. Oh. Well, yeah. you're wrong. No, I'm not. You no. are, you're wrong. No, I'm not. Yeah, I'm look not. at that over there. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, it said not murderer. Did it say not murderer? No, I know oh, this I'm one. Sorry. I know. Atari. That's the guy who made E.T. on the Atari really? 2600. Oh, it's got one no. shot, yeah. So he's not a murderer. No, yeah, he's so he's deserves to die. Well, this is, you're not meant to have knowledge oh, of these, these people. He had, he's one of the most famous developers in gaming. He had eight oh. weeks to code. Only eight weeks to code E.T. So oh. he actually, he deserves a lot of respect, I feel. He's the guy who made ET. Okay, here's he's got here's very here's little respect for our intelligence, haven't you? Yeah. Here's a question. <laughs> Are you absolutely 100% sure he's never killed anyone? Yeah, well. Yes. Uh, Sodomised, maybe. Do you but, have got away with it. <laughs> Sodomised? Okay, allegedly. <laughs> the creator of ET for the Toho <laughs> ST. Fuck no, the gaming Toho industry. <laughs> it's a sodomite, I'm banging things on the say? Bus. Yeah. This is going well. Well, that's it. Uh, that was Video Game Pioneer. Oh, or a murderer. Shigeru Miyamoto. Is he a murderer or not? Pin on ear. If you can't go to the accordion concert because you need to put your bins out early, try calling the venue and ask if they'll exchange your tickets. At number three, it's Terminator Future Shock. To date, the best Terminator game there's been and one of the most atmospheric shooters ever. With fully textured map graphics and an eerie soundtrack which sold the post-apocalyptic setting perfectly, it's one of the few games that genuinely terrified me. And by terrified, I mean put me mildly on edge. I'm not a baby. In at two, it's Redneck Rampage. What it lacked in pushing the genre forward, it more than made up for with its sense of humour. Power-ups came in the form of edible snacks, but get this, the more you ate, the more flatulent your character became, making stealth a challenge, just like in real life. 
And at number one, my all-time favourite underrated first-person shoot 'em up is Outlaws by LucasArts. Profoundly overlooked, it bucked the sci-fi trend by being set in the Old West, introduced sniper rifles to the genre, and boasted one of the greatest game scores of all time. Red Dead Redemption can go suck a wasp. How's your wife? Hello everyone, it's the time of the show where we introduce a mystery guest. He is here now lurking behind my big blue flaps. You know him as uh, a YouTuber, a comedian, a man with a very brown sofa. He is Mr. Stuart Ashen, a.k.a. Ashens. Will you please part my flaps? Hello. Did you enjoy that uh, process? Uh, that was fantastic. They are the bluest flaps I've ever planted. They are. They're, they're glossy, glossy mm. flaps. So, we're going to play um, a game. Tremendous. And we're going to have a little chat. Wonderful. Uh, but first, should we, should we return through the flaps? Shall I part them for you? Is it possible to go both ways yep. through the flaps? Yeah, these are, these are dual entry flaps. So, ooh, they're the best kind. Bye, everyone. Bye. So, Stuart, we stand before the arcade machine of dreams uh, for a segment where I sort of awkwardly lurk behind you while you're playing a one-player game. This is like all game. my dreams come true. It's, it's, it's mine as well, funnily enough. I get the best view in the house. <laughs> Uh, so, what have you chosen for us to, to play today? Well, eventually I chose Dig Dug. Rah. Which is a game about digging and... And dug Dugging. Dig, dig, diggy Dug. D dug. So do you want to uh, get going? And I can So I can stare at your shoulders and uh, admire the view. My, my gaze will fall... No, I'm just getting weird now. <laughs> uh, so, why Dig Dug? Well, I used to play Dig Dug years ago at the Lake and Heath Rodden Gun Club when my dad would go shooting his shotgun at clay pigeons. And was it just a lack of other games that led you to this? They you... only ever had two machines, and one would rotate. At one stage it was Grisor, then it was uh, Green Beret, or Russian Attack, as it was there, because there were always American machines that ran on quarters. When you, when you said rotate, I thought it was going to be one of those big, impressive kind of G-lock Oh, machines. no, no, no. Oh, nothing like that. Nope. A couple of stand-up coin-ops, and that was your lot. But yeah, Dig Dug was was a permanent feature. So, you're sort of our quintessential guest on this series, where you have mm -hmm. kind of somehow carved out a living rather like Dig Doug, if that is his, if, if, is his name Doug, or is it sort of... Jeff, I can't name? remember, he does have a name, I think, that tells you on the attract screen, but I've forgotten due to idiocy. So you've, you've dug a hole for yourself uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. with a career that you sort of look at old Tat. Which, yeah, which is and the, sometimes new Tat. And it's sort of my personal brand. I am old Tat. Uh, so how did that get started? By accident, really. Um, many years ago, I was uh, a member of a forum, remember those, oh. for an old uh, video games journalist from the 90s. I know who that was. You probably do. Shall we say his name? Yeah, why not? Uh, Stuart Campbell, Stuart who used Campbell. to write for Omega Power magazine. Well, he used to write for Digitizer back in the day. Yes, he did, didn't he? Yes, he always had a panel four, didn't he? And, yeah, somebody spotted this fake PSP for the Sony PSP was the cool thing all the kids wanted at the time um, on eBay for a fiver, and it just played like some crap LCD game from uh, times gone by. So I bought it, as it was a fiver, and just sort of improvised a video showing it off, thinking about 15 people on the forum would ever see it. And it got forwarded to Beta, the big old online oh, newsletter. Oh, yeah, Beta. Goes out on a Friday. And... Um, yeah, about 70,000 people downloaded the WMV file from wow. putpotatofile.net or whatever it was in those days, because, you know, before YouTube and that. And I thought, hmm, maybe there's something to this. But I, of course, hadn't put my website address or my name on it because I didn't expect anybody to really see it. So then I had to make a second video to prove I'd made the first. And more people watched that than the first one. Wow. And I thought, I'm going to do a third, and this will be people sick of it. No, they were not sick of it. So I kept it going. And, um, yeah, when YouTube became a thing, I put it on Google Video, because I always back the winner. And then eventually put it on YouTube as well. And 493 years later, I've made enough money to buy a Mars bar. But after that, what were you trying to achieve out of it? I just kept going as people were watching it, really. And it was something thing new, really. Um, and people were watching it. I was enjoying making it. Why not keep going, really? And I did that for years with no thought that you could ever be able to monetize it or get anything out of it whatsoever. 
So what was the day job back then? The day job back then, well, a lot of really lovely day jobs, that's a lie. Adult social services, uh, that was about as much fun as it sounds. Mm. Um, I did the technical desk at PC World for a bit. Again, about as much fun as it sounds, especially on the day after Boxing Day. Oh my God. We ruined our Christmas because Little Billy's Bunny Rabbit game didn't work. But uh, your YouTube odyssey uh, sort of led you into acting and making films. And yeah, I mean, act, I hadn't acted for years. Um, I sort of did some stage plays and stuff when I was at school. Yeah, then we did like a big sponsored video for Dell Alienware. Uh, called The Proxy, and uh, it was basically like a short science fiction series that we wrote and produced in like 25 seconds. I don't know why I said we, because I didn't write it. It was written by uh, my longtime collaborator, Riyad Barmania. But um, yeah, that went really well. And Riyad is like a proper film director mm. and writer, and had access to many, many cinematic film crew people. We thought, in fact, literally at a party once um, for a sort of YouTube stuff, I just posited to him, you know, we could actually make a film. I'm like, I have an idea for a film. We could write this film together and then make this film. And he's like, I could get some money for that. And we got some money, but it wasn't enough. So we crowdfunded the rest. And that's how Ashens and the Quest for the Game Child was born, which I think was the first proper feature film released on YouTube for free. And you're, you're looking at doing it all over again, aren't you, a sequel? We are. Um, very shortly after recording this, and I don't know when it's going out, so I can't give you exact dates. <laughs> we are... Um, we'll flash it up on the screen. screen. Yay, thank you. Um, yeah, we are crowdfunding for the sequel, Ashens and the Polybius Heist. Because we thought writing a heist film would be fun and not hideously complicated. It was hideously complicated, but we got there in the end. Um, and yeah, we've been trying to get that made for three years. Wow, Hollywood, and, huh? Man, it's, it's just been a dark path, it really has. But so we've got some private money now and we're going to crowdfund the rest, hopefully. And then we can make the film and die in peace. On that note, Stuart, stop playing immediately. Oh. We finished this segment. Oh. Can I just squash one more puka? Because I like the word. <laughs> Three and one. Hi, thank you. Stuart Ashen, everybody. He played a game with us. No applause. Fine. Accordion players, filling your instruments with honey will only make your accordion more sticky. How do you, uh, how um, do you think the first episode went, Paul? Uh, not bad, actually. I'm actually reasonably surprised that it's all come together as well as it has. Do you know what? what? You might be my second or third favourite Digitizer of the Show presenter. Out of the four of us? Mm. That's really impressive. Yeah, definitely. Oh, no, definitely, thank you. That's definitely in the upper 75%. Okay, I'll take that. Um, yeah, I would expect that because mm -hmm. this isn't the first time that you've been on a video game show, is it? No, no, a long time ago. I was, what, 13, 14? I was uh, on Games Master playing uh, Duck Hunt. How did that go? Well, amazingly badly. And trying to blast some innocent wildfowl tonight is a young trigger happy lad from Wirral, Paul Gammon. A well, little bird told me yeah. that you'd had a bad experience on Games Master. I did. It was in front, of, in front of all those people watching. You saw a 13 year old boy cry and mm. say the words, I got too trigger happy four times in a row because he couldn't process emotion. Talk me through what happened in the end. Just got trigger happy. Yeah, you did a bit. Bless. Yeah. Well, you've been such a good boy today yeah. that I want to give you the chance to get even. Is, is this what all this is about? Exactly. Duck hunt? I get the chance yeah. to do Duck Hunt again. There's a twist. Yeah? You're going to do it for real. No. Yeah. Uh, oh, so Go. I just get to plug in with this and then we... Not quite. It's a bit more tangible than that. In okay. fact, I've, I've got a costume that you might like to try on. Just just over there. So you go... You go get that on. Yeah. And I'll get set up here. All right. All right. I'll see you in a minute, Paul. No worries. Now, to play Duck Hunt for real, I need some burly men. Could I have some burly men, please? We have... The first burly man, Steve McNeil, from a future episode of Digitizer the Show. Mr. Stuart Ashen. You can applaud if you want, and digitize his very own no, no, it's the hairs to the ball. Don't believe it, man. Any experience with, with hunting ducks? Um no. Okay. So you guys go over here, uh, I'll bring out the dog, uh, and then we'll see if Paul's ready. Alright. So we have our burly outdoorsmen ready. We're in the great outdoors. There's only one thing remaining. We need a duck. Please, Paul, are you ready? Yeah. How'd you come then? I, 
Really? Paul, come out, please. But Paul. Okay. <laughs> I can't see. Hang on, you've you've put your colostomy bag down the front again, haven't you? That's my hatching pod. <laughs> they don't have a hatching pod, Paul. This one does. You and baby. Double. <laughs> you like to give the camera a little look so I can see you in all your glory? Yeah. So I think you need to go and secrete yourself. I can't breathe, by the way. That's fine. Uh, so you need to go and secrete yourself. All right, okay. Do you need your asthma pump? All right, find, find a hiding place. Those demons, it's all about those demons, putting them to rest. Okay, that's it. Just you give us a shout when you're ready. I'm ready. One more thing, we need a dog to flush out the duck. Could I have the dog, please? Flush out that duck. There you come. That's it. Woof, woof. Woof, woof, please. That way. That way. Go on, boy. Go on, boy. He's in there somewhere. You sniff him out. Come on, boy. Go, boy. Quick, 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 he's out, he's out, he's out, get him, get him, get him, oh yes, that's gonna hurt, and the dog is gone. And the dog is gone. Sorry. So, Sorry. Any idea how many times you hit him? 30. 30 times. So it's now, it's uh, Mr. Hare's turn. Uh, we need the uh, the dog to drag out the duck once more. Dog, please flush out that duck. Here we go. Kill him. Kill him. Close the Kill him. Kill him. <laughs> Kill him. <laughs> Yo! Aim for the colostomy bag. Kill him. Yes. There we go. There we go. You need to make your way back, don't you? He's out. Oh, one last Beautiful. one at the end there. Okay, dog, well we've got one more. How many, how many? 29, 29, 29. 31, 31, 31, 31 times, Mr. Hares is in the lead. So, uh, we need to just have there. a pause while we reload <laughs> the gun. You. Stuart Asham, it's your turn to, to murder that duck. And can we have the dog flushing out the duck, please? Flush him out. Flush out that naughty duck. Don't, don't kill Ready? yourself in the process. Come on, he's in there. Bring him out. Don't, don't, don't take that for an answer. Don't take the, that for an answer. Kill him, quick! Oh, he's got a gun. Fire, oh, fuck off! It's funny, do you yeah. shoot at me? Do you do it? Is it funny now? Do it, do it! I want you to do it! Yeah. Is it funny? Is it? Yeah, you did a bit. Have you enjoyed yourself, really? 